At Hindu temples in Bali, the monkey dance symbolizes the epic victory of Hanuman, the monkey god, a kind and brave divinity whose exploits are recounted in the Ramayana. In the Dandaka forest, Rama the king reigned peacefully at the side of his wife, Queen Sita, the most beautiful woman in the world. One day, the king met an enchanted deer. He decided to hunt it down and before long was far from his kingdom. Taking advantage of his absence, the evil Ravana, the god of demons, kidnapped the beautiful Sita with the intention of marrying her. He succeeded in removing her from the magic circle where she had taken refuge. Overcome with sorrow, Rama begged Hanuman to help him. The monkey god raised an army and, without hesitating, entered the kingdom of darkness reigned over by the feared Ravana. After a bloody battle, Hanuman and his army defeated Ravana and freed Queen Sita. Ever since, the monkey has been a venerated figure in the Hindu religion in Bali, Indonesia, and in India too, as in the city of Jodhpur, located in the northwest of the country. Here, Langur monkeys are thought of as being the descendants of Hanuman's companions. For the people here, they are a blessing and a source of divine protection. They are treated with the respect that brave warriors of the monkey god deserve. The entire city is their kingdom and their playground. Langers are given total freedom and behave like soldiers in a conquered land. <laughs> to get around, these small living gods leap from roof to roof. When the buildings are too far apart, however, they cross the busy streets, like simple mortals. Only the kind glances of the passers-by betray their very privileged status. Jadapur is the commercial center of an important agricultural region. Many of the inhabitants live off the sale of their fruits and vegetables. The only problem is that some customers don't want to pay. And yet, it's hard to complain. After all, it's an honor to feed the companions of the monkey god. Long ago, the langurs lived in the forest, but as it became smaller, the monkeys had to adapt to a new environment. City life has both advantages and risks. In Jodhpur, electrocution is the number one cause of death among baby monkeys. 
Their mother is not the only one to cry. Covered with a shroud bearing the name of the god Rama, the animal is mourned with prayers, just as a human being would be. This ritual is meant to purify the soul and to prepare the animal for its future reincarnation. Every Tuesday, the Hindus pay tribute to Hanuman. As a major divinity, the monkey god symbolizes strength and protection, as well as devotion to others. Offerings are prepared in honor of Hanuman's soldiers who fought so valiantly at his side. Seeing the feast being offered to them, the Langers quickly lose their reticence. Once alone, they get up their courage and take their presents in the name of Hanuman, of course. As heirs to the monkey god, the Langers of Jodhpur have their destiny laid out for them, in the midst of a people devoted to them and prepared to give them everything they have. India, the land of Hanuman, is also where Buddha was born. In the Buddhist religion, however, the image of the monkey gets very complex. The province of Phet Buri is in Thailand, southwest of Bangkok. Here, the Temple of Khao regularly receives some surprising visitors, a group of red-faced macaques. Have they come looking for peace? For Buddhists, the monkey sometimes symbolizes the distracted conscience, a conscience that jumps from one thing to another, in the same way as the animal leaps from branch to branch. Incapable of controlling his wants, a slave to his desires, he is condemned to suffer. He represents man left to his own devices and impulses. Tabara is a Buddhist monk. He's 60 and has lived at the Cow Temple since he was 12. Every day he brings the monkeys some of the offerings he's received from the local population that morning. Nothing requires him to do so, not even his religion. The monk is simply a friend of the red-faced macaques. Offering them food can prove dangerous. It creates competition among the monkeys, whose canine teeth are as sharp as a saber. Tavara, however, has never been bitten. By observing the animals, the monk takes stock of the consequences of uncontrolled desire, anger, arrogance, or jealousy. Tavara scolds Grodo, the dominant male, for having chased the oldest monkey away. Tavara is convinced that Buddhism can help animals to develop. Thanks to his contact with the monk, Ooh, the old monkey, seems to have acquired a form of wisdom and no longer behaves aggressively with anyone. Every morning, Tavara gathers his religious community together for meditation. 
His goal is to discipline men's minds, which are as flighty and agitated as the monkeys that frequent the cow temple. The monks try to regulate their breathing. With eyes closed, they concentrate on the inner being. Little by little, their mind is stabilized and all suffering disappears. Once they are at peace, they can face earthly desires and improve their karma. <laughs> 